just found out I've got a lifer out on licence this morning. Ruth Slater. How long's she been in for? Fifteen years. She was 17 when she went inside. She murdered two policemen. Shot them. One in the face, one in the chest. One near 50, not far off retirement, and the other one a rookie lad. My name's Sally Wainwright, and I've been writing television for um, about 20 years now. And I've written um, a number of shows. Uh, I started on things like Coronation Street and Playing the Field. And since then, I've written, the first big thing I wrote was At Home with the Braithwaite's. And uh, the latest thing I've written is Unforgiven. So Sally, can you tell us a little bit about how Unforgiven actually came about? There's a couple of things that um, kind of sparked it off. One was a drama on ITV called Torn, which was about um, a woman who lost her child. As a, and the, uh, the child was abducted as an infant and then she came across again in later life. Um, and it was really well done and I really enjoyed it and it got to me the idea of being dispossessed and losing contact with those closest to you and I think that uh, sparked off a little seed of thought. Did you think of it as an ITV drama or could it have worked for BBC Channel 4? I didn't think of it specifically as an ITV drama. Um, my first thought was uh, what, what's the story, what's the structure. I knew very quickly that I wanted to show it to Nicola Schindler. I knew very quickly that I wanted Sir Anne to play Ruth. Um, and I, th I did know reasonably quickly that I wanted to pitch it to ITV, but that was, rather than being a creative thing, it was an expedient thing because I thought we'd get a quicker answer out of ITV. And I was quite, I'd spent the whole year developing three projects for the BBC, which never seemed to get any near production and it seemed silly to send another one into the abyss uh, and I knew that uh, Laura would say yes or no quite quickly in comparison and she did so it worked it, 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 yeah it was it, it could have worked perfectly well on BBC One I'm sure it would have done and I hope it would have worked on Channel 4 I don't know but I, I, don't, I don't think there's any reason why it wasn't couldn't have worked on those channels but um, uh, it, it was sent to ITV actually on a rather more practical level than an artistic one. Um, and it, it was a very smooth process and it's not always like this, but it, but it can, you know, it can be with ITV. They are very good at, um, often they're very good at making quick decisions. Um, um, so um, we, got, we, got, we got the idea that it was something they wanted and, and they asked for a script. So um, I wrote it in about three weeks and I think it, it it was greenlit really quickly. There are lots of stories of development hell. Of course. Why, why do you think Unforgiven had such a, a smooth um, process from to commissioning to production? Um, God knows. I mean, having worked on so many projects where you're just as passionate about them and you get stuck in hell with them. I think it had, uh, the things I, th I now think it had in its favour, uh, are that it was, it was a very clear idea right from the word go. Um, it had very strong characters and it had a very interesting structure. And those things n n kicked into place very quickly early on in the process. And I think at the heart of it, there was something very um, moving and deep about this central character. And I think it, um, it, it clearly pushed a lot of buttons with people straight away and I assume that's what it was and I like to think all my work's like that but clearly not because you know often you don't get things greenlit that quickly um, but uh, you know retrospectively I assume that um, people could see things in it that um, you know were, were, were there basically and and, uh, and that uh, you know were realised when it got onto the screen as well. How important for you was it that it was actually shot in Yorkshire? Um, I, I wrote it very definitely set in Yorkshire and uh, there was no reason to shoot it anywhere else. I mean, I, I hope it's a universal story and you could have set it anywhere, but I tend to write um, in my own voice um, and my own vernacular, which is West Yorkshire. Um, uh, and it, 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 you know, it fitted that 
landscape it fitted that the, the mood of that landscape and um it, it would it, there's no reason not to film it in Yorkshire do you think it would have worked if it had been shot in Cornwall or it, it would have been very yeah. different it would have worked it? I don't know that it wouldn't have worked I, I you know I do I, th I think the landscape was um um a, a, another character almost and the house was another character uh you know right from early on we were thinking in those terms of um that um bleak but beautiful um landscape where the farm was and the urban landscape of halifax as well being intrinsic to the mood of it and the, the, the feel of it and the style of it um so i'm sure you could have you could set that story anywhere it's it's it, 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 it's a universal story but um i i wanted it to set it in west yorkshire yeah definitely how easy was it, do you think, to find the locations that were needed? Did you get a sense from the production team that they found the locations they needed quite easily? Yeah, because what we did early on is um, I went out with um, Karen, who produced it, and Brett, who was the production manager. And Brett said, T show me what you, where you've set it, show me what you've got in mind. So we just drove around the farmhouse where I used to visit when I was little because my friend lived there. And that's what, when they, and they, so they just knocked on the door and asked them if they could use it, and they, they, they were fine. So a lot of the um, locations were just places I, well, not all of them, but a number of them were just places I knew as a, you know, a teenager. You know, there were some brilliant images like Ruth standing on the wall, and it wasn't at all idyllic or soft. It was, it was, it was dramatic and beautiful, but it was, it was bleak as well. You know, I think it was a, uh, I think, uh, you know, it was, it was a fantastic mixture of, what that part of the world is very beautiful but very harsh as well the, the shoot went very well it was very there was a brilliant first assistant dan winch who just uh, seemed to run the whole thing perfectly everything got shot that was supposed to be shot i think they overran twice and they were very happy to do it the crew apparently uh, so i'm told uh, uh i think it was you know it was a very good shoot from that point of view the, the biggest problem for me was um, episode three because um, David shot 72 minutes and we had to get it down to 46 minutes 10. So there were disagreements about what should stay in and what should be edited out. And obviously we had to lose things that we were all unhappy about losing because of the huge amount of uh, that we had to lose to tell the story. Um, there will always be things that you're not happy with at the end of it, I think, in my experience. As a writer, there's, I always get upset by parts of the process. Um, I try and minimise it because I get as involved as I can be. I spend a lot of time on set, so if, and I learned this from Kmella, you know, if something goes wrong and you're not happy with it at the end of the day, it's your own fault if you haven't got involved and made it clear what you want. Because there's so many times you've, when you write stage directions, and a director has misunderstood, and you realise when you read it that. There is an ambiguity there and they've just simply misunderstood and if you go on set and they're filming something and it's wrong um i don't want to spend the rest of my life re regretting a choice that's been made because i wasn't there to say look this is not quite what i had in mind well you got almost double the ratings for that slot i think it was over seven million you must have been really pleased with the figures um no i mean you know in your wildest dreams we were going to get 7.2 million, <laughs> and we did. Yes, yeah, so it was it was wonderful.